God is good. Amen. Well, are you happy to be in the Lord's house today? How happy are you to be in the Lord's house today? Well, I tell you, what's that word say up on that bird board this morning? Okay, look to your neighbor and say, action! Did you put some enthusiasm into that? Action! Brother Allen, don't you wish you could be here every Sunday? Don't lie. You're in church. Okay. God's good, isn't he? I could if you moved the church divider. Yeah, if I moved the church divider. Okay. Okay, I'd really just come and get you sometimes, brother. Amen. We like our church where it's at. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. I want to speak about action. Now, what do I mean action? What do you think I'm talking about? I'm talking spiritually. Who believes we must have spiritual action? We talk all the time, guys, in the church about how putting things into action, okay? How we should keep moving forward, amen? So we're going to get into the book of Nehemiah this morning. And we're going to talk about what Nehemiah, I considered him as action because he was a man that wanted to move the plan, amen? And you know, guys, we've been going through that in the church. We want the plan to keep moving every single day, amen? I want every service to get better. Yeah, let me go back to my frame. I want every service to get gooder and gooder and gooder, don't you? If we have action in the church <clears throat> that we can't hardly contain, what's going to happen? It's going to go outside. Am I right, Sister Sandy? Do we want that? We want our action to start here in the church, and we want our action to build up in the church. Then we want to take that action out to the people. Amen? Somebody said during Sunday school, aren't we supposed to be soul searchers? Aren't we supposed to be, supposed to be looking for souls to win into the kingdom of God? Amen? We're going to talk about action this morning in the book of Nehemiah, I believe I want to go to the sixth chapter. Yeah, we're going to go to the sixth chapter. But before we actually read in the sixth chapter, I want to explain a few things. We're going to be in uh, Nehemiah 6, and we're just going to cover verses 15 and 16. They are also on the screen up here this morning. Thank God everybody can see that. Amen. I like it on the screen, so if you can't quite get there, you can see where it's at. Just remember just remember Nehemiah 6, and here it is up here. Action. Well, there are times, I want to know if you believe this this morning, there are times when a dedicated believer, I want you to use yourself in this situation that I'm talking about. If you are a dedicated believer, do you understand this morning that you can change the whole atmosphere of a situation simply by trusting God. Amen. Boy, you believe that. Wasn't that good? And making that faithful move, making that step, taking that action. You ever heard that old saying? Put your mouth in gear and let's have some action. Do you believe that this morning? Sometimes we just use our mouth, but we don't have any action to go with it. Amen? We got to take God's word and not only speak it, but we got to prove it. As bad as I hate to say that, but we do, Sister Emily. We got to prove it to some people out there. Some people still don't believe that there's an actual God. Do you believe that? Amen. Their God is their money, their God is their people, their God is whatever, but it's not the true God that we are supposed to serve. You. Claim to be a dedicated, faithful Christian, my friend. You must get out this door, and you must witness to the people. There's a lot of lost people out there. Do you think Nehemiah knew that? Well, now, we're talking way back in the Old Testament. Do you think there was lost people back then? What do you think? Boy, there's always been lost people, huh? But it seems as if more people are complainers. And they're moaners. Yep. Can't help but think what Brother Albert was saying a while ago about them poor little special needs kids. Amen. See, there's a couple of good things I can say about that this morning. Number one, they're guaranteed heaven. Amen. Am I right? Amen. They're guaranteed heaven. Number two, the poor kids don't even realize exactly what's going on. 
Do I still feel for them? Yes. But you know what? If you really want to know the truth, they got it made. Am I right, Sister Debbie? I mean, think about it. They do. But see, here's the thing. We know better. See, all they do is good because they know no different. Amen? Heaven is going to be their home. So you know what? We must feel and pray for people like that. Well, you know, our schools, they're really in bad shape today. All of you know that? And you hear people say, I can't believe he acts like that. I can't believe she acts like that. You sit there and you listen to that and you look at them and you're thinking you probably act the same way or you wouldn't be griping about that situation. What are we supposed to be doing, guys? We're supposed to be praying. Why don't someone do something about all of this? Did you catch that? Why don't someone do something about this? Uh huh. Have you ever said that? Why don't somebody do something about it? Well, let me ask you something this morning. Why don't you do something about it? You know what they think, Sister Sue? Well, it's not my job. Hey, you know what? We got some prayer warriors in the church. Sister, please pray. Hey, brother, please pray. We just go on our way. What did we, what did we just do? Pass the buck. <laughs> Pass the buck. That's a good one. We did. You think God's happy with that? Do you think God's pleased with that? No, we should have been saying, Sister, pray with me. Brother, let's get a prayer chain going. Brother, I'm going to be in prayer for your situation. Please remember me in your prayers. We all stand in the need of prayer. Pass the book. Pass the book. Pass the book. Nehemiah said, you know what? I'm taking action. That's what you got to do, guys. You got to say, I'm going to take action. I'm going to make this happen, and this is going to take place because I'm going to take control and say, God, lead me. God, direct me. And God, I know that you'll protect me. Well, now, Brother Albert, I can't go over there. That's kind of rough over there. Well, now, you know what? God's been in a lot of rough situations, too. What about Jesus? Jesus went everywhere. He went into the ghettos. huh? He went to the rich. He went to the poor. Oh, listen to this. He went to the special needs. Did he? He went here, he went there, he went hither, and he said, you know what? I'm bringing the word of God to the people. Action said, Nehemiah said, i got to put action in this. I can't help but say this. Sometimes you go to a church service and the preacher hollers and screams and runs and jumps and flips and does somersaults and jumps into baptistry and comes out, and when you leave church, you're going... I really didn't catch anything he said. <laughs> I did hear a bunch of that today. I might scream and I might holler and I might jump a little bit, but you're going to understand what I'm saying today because Nehemiah said, I'm taking action. I wonder if Nehemiah was a, well, Lord, I'd like to have some action in life. Lord, would you give me a little bit of action today? I don't believe that. I believe Nehemiah said, God, I want some action. I want you to give it to me. I want to get out there and I want to pour it on because I want the people to remember who Nehemiah was. I want the people to know who God really is. Well, you got to put action into it. Third chapter. Don't go there. Just hold your Bibles where you're at. I want you to stay in the sixth chapter right here. I want to just tell you a little something first. In chapter number three of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was getting people organized. Oh, boy. Does that ring a bell to you? Amen. We have to organize the church. Amen. huh? We have to get the people in order. To be able to take action. If the people's out of order, your action (laughs) is going to be dilemma. Your action is going to be depression. Your action is going to be complaining. Your action is going to be negative. 
I don't like negative. I love positive. That's why I married my little wife. I love positive. Amen. What you laughing at? God's good, isn't he? Well, see, in chapter number three, he took time and he took control of what God had. Nehemiah just didn't wake up one morning. Now, watch me. I'm going to go out and get the people organized. They, I tell you, these bunch of, these bunch of dingbats, these bunch of morons. I mean, they're all a bunch of rebels. I mean, look at all these people. I'm going out and straighten them up. Amen. I'm going out and get my people organized. I'm tired of this disorganization. No. I believe Nehemiah got up and said, God, help me. Help me to organize. I think it's okay to say, God, help me to organize these people. Help me to organize some of these rebels. Help me to organize these people that don't even believe in you. I believe God answered that. Well, he answered it for Nehemiah, but I don't know if he'd answer it for me. He's the same God today as he was back in Nehemiah's day. He's the same God today that we're going to have tomorrow. What do you mean he can't do it for you? We're without excuse. That's right. Boy, we say that all the time. You're tired of hearing it? Tough. I'm going to keep saying it. Because we are without excuse. He got through that. Chapter number four. I believe that he had to employ a strategy. Do you believe that? To, to frustrate the enemy. Do you know that's the devil? Did you know that the devil was around back then? That poor old thing ought to be okay by now, right? Man, his devil was old, but he was still there. Yeah, he was strong. He's still strong. But I know someone that's stronger than him. You see, guys, we go into battles. We go into battles. But we're such a weakling. Am I right? We are. We're a weakling. And we're kind of sissified. But if we're like Nehemiah, and we stand up and we say, God is in control of my strategy. God is in control of what I'm going to do. God says, you're going to make it, Pastor. You're going to make it, brother. See, guys, no more excuses. If Nehemiah could do it, he wasn't a robot. He was a human being. He was a man. But here's the thing. He was a man of God. And he said, God, we talked about this in Sunday school. I tell you what, don't you just love confirmation? It happens so much. We talked about how we got to be a person of God, how we got to show our strategy to the world. How do we do that? With a lot of prayer. You know, we talk about in the Bible how it says we are peculiar. Don't look at your neighbor and laugh because you're peculiar too. The Bible says we will be peculiar. Quit hitting my wife like that. <laughs> hey, you're peculiar. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay, I figured you. More than you are, right? We are peculiar. My Bible tells me to, Brother Ricky. It says when we claim. And when we act, and when we're a witness of God, Sister Henry, we're going to be different. That's right. Mm-hmm. They see us differently. That's right. exactly right. Let me remind all of you of something today. The world, when they're carnal-minded, and they don't have God in them, they seem different to you, don't they? Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Boy, are we different to them. Mm-hmm. I like being peculiar. My wife said I was peculiar before I got saved. What does that mean, Brother Allen? I didn't ask you anything. Be quiet. We are all peculiar in our good ways. Do you believe that? You know how you frustrated the enemies? He went into a lot of prayer. 
Oh, Sister Sue, I wonder if he did any fasting. Some of you can't wait to see how fast you can get out of here to go to the fast drive-thru. I am not talking that kind of fasting. <laughs> Don't worry about your beans. We're going to be a little bit late today. If they're burnt, put some sugar in them. They'll be okay. Because we're not rushing God's time. Amen. But Nehemiah, I do believe he prayed. I do believe he fasted. And I do believe he was a man of God. And he said, I want action. Who believes this today? You ask God for action. You better hang on. Who's the cowboy in here besides Brother Albert? When we're going for God. Oh, this ain't right church, amen? <laughs> Illustration. When we're going for God, when we ask for that action of God, reminds me of bull riding. Uh -huh. I watch that sometimes on TV. Yeah. And I think these football players think they're something. Right. Throw them on the back of a bull and see how long they last. Yeah. Huh? Now that's tough, guys. But here's my point I'm trying to say. Are you that tough yep. in God's eyes this morning? Are you that strong? Mm -hmm. Some of you is looking like, you're right, Sister Sue, spiritually. If you're not, you can be. I was also going to say, if you're not, I feel for you. Because let me tell you something. You know, the churches today... They're so slack. The churches today, they're so lazy. And the churches today, you know, this is supposed to be an open door church. Am I correct? Oh, it's locked. Okay, we might need to keep it locked. Amen. We're keeping the devil out this morning. Amen. Somebody knocks, Brother Albert, get your holster and go see. Amen. But God says we can take action. God says that we can open the door to anybody. Am I right? God says to accept everybody in the church. Nehemiah, when he went out, he already had this strategy because God done told him, accept everybody. Then work on them. Well, I wouldn't let him come to my church. He smokes dope. I wouldn't let her come to my church because she hangs around the ghetto too much. The church is here to change the people. How do you change them if you won't let them in? Amen. Well, some of you's looking at me like, yeah, what if you get them in here and they won't change? Well, guess what? I'll just let Sister Sue preach one morning and they'll be gone. <laughs> Did everybody get that? Sister Emily. Sister Emily doesn't just clap. She goes. Man, I call that full blast. Amen. Hey, Sister Emily, it's what it is. It's how, it, it is what it is. Yeah, you know it, huh? Here's my point. Prayer and fasting will change them or remove them. Well, Pastor, that sounds kind of blunt. Hey, I'm telling you what God told me to tell you. Now, tell him he's blunt. I, th I thought none of you would look up. Yeah, amen. God's good. Grow or go. Grow or go. I want you to grow in God's words, in God's life in God's being because if Nehemiah done it you can do it Amen. I'm just about ready to get into the scriptures and start preaching here in a minute <coughs> God's good isn't he okay chapter 3 he organized people chapter 4 he employed a strategy chapter 5 he confronted the enemies watch this face to face am I right he went to them face to face. He didn't say, stay over there, enemies. You know, guys, sometimes that's your problem. You keep the enemy over there, and he's steadily throwing them old darts at you. And, boy, sometimes you'll move, and sometimes it'll hit you, and then you look at God and say, what's up with that, God? No. You got to pray and say, God, give me the strength to face that enemy face on. You can't do it without action. Well, now we're ready to go to the Word. You want to? 
Nehemiah 6.15. So the wall was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month, Elul, in 50 and 2 days. Well, what's that talking about here? You know, Nehemiah was building a wall against the people that didn't like him and didn't like God, remember? So the walls was finished in the 20, in other words, 52, late, 52 days later, the wall was complete. Now, if you'll go to, you don't have to go there, but remember this, Daniel 9, 25, the completion of the walls in troublous times. Who believes that we're in troublous times? Who believes that we are in a time when we have to build a wall against the enemy? We cannot be embarrassed anymore. We can't be a sissy anymore. We got to stand up to what God have. We cannot give up. We cannot give in. We cannot falter. We cannot be a sissy. As my wife would say, you can't be a ninny baby anymore. You got to get off the bottle. You got to get the meat. You got to grow up and you got to be able to face every situation. Did you read that in the bulletin I put this morning? I put some cardboard boxes out here one time. Small, they got bigger and they got bigger and they got bigger. You know, guys, we got to crush them. We can't walk around them any longer. I'm telling you today that God is telling the church if there's any boxes that you have left behind, that you have went around, God says you got to crush them. Because do you believe this today? That's a hindrance. That's a hindrance. That's a hill. That's a mountain. God says that we can move a mountain. If God says we can move a mountain, what is that little problem to you? What is that little situation? If God says we can move a mountain, and I'm from a mountainous area, and when you look at a mountain, you're going, yeah, okay, God. I can move that. But guess what? He gave us that faith. And he said we can move that mountain. But you know what we do? Yeah, right. That's today's speak. Yeah, right. You doubt, you pout, you do without. Well, why did I say that? Because there's a lot of doubt. Oh, you know where I'm going, don't you? There's even doubt in the churches today. In fact, I think I could say there's a lot of doubt in a lot of churches. Don't look back, Sister Sandy. I hurt somebody's feelings, okay? So just go to pray and they don't run out of here, okay? But am, I, am I right? Am I right? There is a lot of doubt. And it's running rampant, Sister Emily. It's running rampant. You know what God is saying about doubt? I'm sure he's going... I can't use you. Do you think God can be blunt like that? I can't use you. You have doubt. You don't even really believe what I can do. How can I use you? Do you want to be in that situation? I want to be able to be used. Other than by family members. <laughs> Woo, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> I know. Lord, in Jesus' name, forgive me. See, people try to use you, but God wants to use us spiritually to save souls to the glory of the kingdom. I'm not going to look back when I ask this question. How many people have you invited to church lately? Oh, my goodness, it got quiet in the place. Oh, my goodness, it got quiet in the place today. Well, Pastor Steve, they know where the church is at, especially now since the shopping center is down. Well, Pastor Steve, I'm sure Sister Sandy ran into somebody this week and said, Hey, would you like to come to church Sunday? I'm sure Sister Henry on the job said, Hey, would you like to come to church Sunday? So I don't have to do that. Well, that's what we think, don't we? Yep. What do you think Nehemiah thought of situations like that? No. No, 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 no. He kept going to the people. Remember, he organized him. He organized a strategy, and he said, you've got to speak out to the world. 
Amen. You've got to be peculiar. You've got to be strange. And believe me, we all fit that case here. We all fit the situation. Okay, that part's out of the way. You're peculiar, you're strange, you're odd, you're weird. So what? Boy, some of us is really weird. But you know what? We are weird to the world. But Nehemiah just thought, you know, oh well. And I don't think he said that with an attitude. I believe he said it like this. Well, God, help him. Touch the situation. I'm really not weird. I'm really not. But I'm strong on God's word. I'm bold with what God has for me. If I'm bold for what God has for me, I need to share it. You know, it's called the Care Share Program. We need to care. We need to share. We need to put it on a plate and put it out there, don't we? It's the care share program. I care. I care about the people. Man, I care for you people. I love you people. I pray for you people every day. You are my sheep. You are my life. You are my family right underneath God. But I also care about them. I'm also concerned for the lost world. I'm concerned for the atheist. I'm concerned for the people that say they believe, but they don't live God's word. You know the statistics. 91% of the world believes in God. Whoopee! Whoopee! Wow! I don't mean that with an attitude. Here's what I'm saying. If that 91, oh boy, it's going to get deep here. Let me get up here. If that 91% that believed in God lived for God, this world would be on fire. You talk about action, boy, action would be put in place in this place, and we would be, you know what? These churches would be packed. We'd have to knock a wall wall out. That's fine with me. But if we don't, that's still fine with me. I hope that all churches prosper if they are teaching and preaching God's word. Well, Pastor Steve, I can't believe your church didn't get flooded back there. Sure is low back there. I know it is. But see, God had his hand on this place. And no, I'm not saying that this church is better than any other church. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is God kept his hand on this church. Is there churches out there preaching the right word that got flooded? I believe it. Yeah. Here's all I'm trying to say this morning. Now, you know, God does work in mysterious ways. Do we all understand that today? So God was working on Nehemiah in a special way, if you want to ask me. If you go to verse number 16, after this was finished right here, what does it tell us? And it came to pass that when all of our enemies heard thereof and all the heathen... You ever call your kid that? That were about us saw these things. They were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. I love that. And when it came to pass, that means God took care of a situation. What do you believe? What do you believe? You know what, guys? I want to say this because I think the Lord just gave it to me. When we pass... From this world, I think it kind of means something like that. It's gone. We're gone. We're out of the problems. We're out of the situations. We're out of the soreness. We're out of this. We're out of that. We're out of these burdens. And God says, guess what, my son? Guess what, my daughter? It's perfect time. No pain, no sorrow, no misunderstanding. And it came to pass. Listen to this, guys. When all of our enemies... Don't look at me like you don't got any enemies. Do you do you have enemies this morning? How many? Don't look at your spouse this morning. Hi, baby. When all of our enemies heard thereof that all the nations, is that what that says? 
all the nations about us feared. Feared. Feared, feared, feared. Do you fear God today? How much do you fear God today? What about the 91% that believes in God? They apparently don't fear God like we do. Would this world be in this condition that it's in today? Would this world be in the turmoil? Sister Crystal, God, he's been taking his hands off of the world. And he's looking at us. I wonder if he does this. My, my. My, 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 my. Look at the things that are going on. We was out here a while ago, and I heard some banging. I looked over there, and they're working on a new car wash today. I'm thinking probably have grand opening next Sunday. <laughs> but see, people doesn't think about things like that anymore. How we should reverence God. Just a little something I'd give you free this morning because I think it goes with this. And we're much cast down in their own eyes. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful to know that we can cast down them enemies? And the only way we can cast down them enemies is by the power of God. You can go out there and shoot somebody with a rubber band if you want to and hurt them for a little while, but it's not going to kill them. God says he'd take them away from you. God says he would remove them. God says he would get them out of your path. God said that he would let the dust fly, and you could be away from these situations. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Well, Nehemiah said, I'm going to show the people <clears throat> that the things that are being done here is of God. You know, Nehemiah wasn't this kind of guy. Boy, I'm doing so good today. Man, I just love showing all these people how to work. No, that's not what Nehemiah was doing. Nehemiah was saying, thank you, Lord, right? right. For helping me to be the person that I need to be. I know. It's getting deep in here, isn't it, this morning? But you know what? Spiritually. Let me leave you with a little something today. Do you love Nehemiah? Hey, he's one of them guys I can't wait to shake his hand. And Brother Albert give him a hug when I get there. Man, I can't wait to see Nehemiah. I can't wait to see old Job just think he ain't going to have no balls on him. Man, he's going to look good. What do you think? And Paul, I can't wait to see him either. You remember that snake that bit old Paul? Them marks aren't going to be there. Amen? And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, you know what, guys? The enemy will flee. The enemy has to flee, as a matter of fact. Don't look at me like, what do you mean by that? You know what I mean. The enemy has to flee if you do what you need to do. Well, can I say this this morning? If the enemy is still on top of your shoulders, you need to get rid of him. And can I go ahead and pop your bubble this morning? I don't care how many times you've been to the gym this week. You're not strong enough to shake that enemy off. You're not strong enough in your own power because you know what? The enemy's name should have been Elmer because he can stick on you like glue. Am I right? When Nehemiah was attacked, he refused to fear. Ooh. Ooh. Well, that don't sound like no big deal. I think you better, I think I better read that again. I have that on a note. When Nehemiah was attacked, he refused to fear. Do you refuse to fear? Now, let me tell you something. Nehemiah, you know, there's a lot of priests back in them days, remember? A lot of priests. Nehemiah wasn't a priest. Nehemiah was a Joe Blow. Am I right? Yeah. Nehemiah was like you and I, brother, like all of you. He was just a... Oh, I think I heard the word simple in Sunday school. You talk about a simple man bringing out the word of God. Just look up here. I'm simple, but I ask God to help me. I ask God to help me bring out the word. Nehemiah said, now God, can't you imagine Nehemiah talking to him? 
Now, God, you know I'm simple. What about Moses? Now, God, 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 you know I can't talk, 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 talk very good. But, but what did God say? I will help you. I will show you. I will guide you. Nehemiah's going, oh, God, there's so many enemies out there. Am I right? Now you got enemies. While you go, you had none. Boy, I knew I'd talk long enough to convince you you got enemies. And they're out there. They're out there to get you. They're out there to steal your joy. Woo! That's something they love to do. Is steal your joy. Nehemiah said, thank you, God. Thank you. See, Nehemiah, you know, we talk about faith. He was taking steps like this. And as God worked with him, they got bigger and they got bigger and he got taller and he got taller and he was able. Boy, I bet he felt like Long John Tone, huh? Don't you? <laughs> I bet he felt like he was a basketball player. But he was so tall and he was so, can I say this, proud of what God had done for him. He was, how about thankful? This was brought up in Sunday school too. Whew. Well, boy, I wish I had her faith. I wish I could do what he does. Oh, get off that. Amen. You lying to yourself. As Brother Alvin said, you lie to yourself. You be lying to yourself, right? But here's what you got to do. You got to say, I can have what he's got. That's right. Boy, sometimes I look at my wife and I say, you are so wise. <laughs> I do. It's because I'm pumping you up. Why would you say something? You know it's not over yet, right? That's wise. Sometimes she said that was Steve, but that's beside the point. I can have that. I can have that wisdom. I don't want your hair. I'd look funny with long hair. Oh, yeah, my days are gone. Hey, Brother Ricky, at least one thing about we know what long hair is, huh? Oh, yeah. We've had, hey, we've had long hair before, amen? I had a lady call me the other day. She said, uh, I remember you. You got that real long beard. I'm going, no, ma'am, I don't no more. I said, it's been a while since you've seen me. She said, well, it hadn't been that long. I said, oh, wait till you see me now. Not only do I have a short beard, I don't have any hair. <laughs> you may think this is the wrong guy, amen? But aren't you thankful today? That the hairs on our head, the hairs on our face, that's not what's going to get us to heaven. Nope. What is going to get us to heaven? Jesus. Being a Nehemiah. I, I just suppose, my friends, had to have been very tough back in them days. Remember, Jesus wasn't even here yet. Remember? Boy, they went through all kinds of sacrifices. They went through all kinds of... I'm trying to end here, okay? I said that 20 minutes ago, didn't I? Be quiet. But in saying that, here's what I want to say. Nehemiah stood up to no matter what enemy come to him, and he faced him without fear. Right. Guys, you got to quit. You got to quit backing off. You got to quit whimpering down. I want you to remember Nehemiah. I want you to remember the things that he went through. You know, even people of God told Job to curse him. Go ahead and die. But see, Job was like Nehemiah. Do you believe this? He was strong enough. Maybe he was laid up in the bed. Maybe pus was running out of his whole body. Maybe he was in tremendous pain. But he still had God's spirit. Amen. Some days our knees hurt. And the only prayer we make is this. Lord, touch my knee. Lord, my knee hurts. But you forgot all the rest of the praying today. We got to pray for all situations. We got to pray for all things. For they perceived that this work was from our God. Are you thankful today to know that we have a God 
that will supply our needs? Are you thankful to know today that God will save your soul from that place called hell? Are you glad to know today that God says, I'll give you the strength, I'll give you the power, I'll give you the faith, I'll give you the love, on and on and on to face all situations. But we have to take action. We got to put action in our words. Guys, you can't just attempt to serve God every day like this. I say this about some people in the church. God, move them if you can. I believe, like I said, I believe somebody can start jumping pews right now. Some of you sit there and go, God, I can't believe you woke me up. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Where is our action? Right. Do we have action now? Yeah. You're going to all agree with me or we're going to stay here all day. Yeah. Boy, that got him going, didn't it? Hey, the asleep just awoke. Amen. <laughs> Woo, it's time to go home. No, I do not see a clock in here. Does anybody else? Amen. I see a crooked picture. But that one over there bugs you? I didn't see that. Oh, I got to straighten this up. God is good. God is good. But now you got to remember, guys. Let's close with this. <laughs> Nehemiah, what a man. Come on now. Right. What a man he was. But he stood his ground. Right. Are you going to stand your ground no matter what? Right. No matter what trial or tribulation comes on you. Most of us in here got wet from the storm. Am I right? Most of us got wet. We could have thrown our hands in the air, couldn't we? My goodness. I just can't believe that happened to me. I tell you what, I go to church two times a month. I put my 75 cents in the plate every two weeks when I go there. I can't believe you've done this to me, God. Where is your morals? Where is your acknowledgement of God. Let's all stand. Isn't God good? I've seen the action starting to go away, so I made him get up. Yeah, action. Let's see if you can get up out of that chair this morning. Amen. I got a question for all of you. Are you still glad you come to church? Oh, praise God. I knew you said you was before I started. I'd really like to ask after I get done. Are you still glad you came today? Are you going to take action? Are you going to take action? I'm going to ask everybody this morning. We're going to take a moment of silence, and we're going to ask God. I want you to ask God, actually. God, do I have the action that I need? God, is some of them things that the pastor was talking about a while ago, are they in my way? Or am I still going around these things? I want you to get that out of your way today. I want you to be, let me say this, action-packed. I want you to be so packed with action that you're bubbling over with joy, you'll put Calgon to shame. You're going to be bubbling and you're going to be popping with joy because you have the action that God wants you to have. So with all heads bowed and all eyes closed this morning, I want you to realize this altar is open. And I want to ask that you would come down here, stand at the altar, kneel at the altar, sit at the altar if you got to. I don't care. Just come down here if God is telling you to. I'm not going to slap you on the head. I'm not going to holler your name out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I want to pray for you this morning that God gives you action in your life. Now, Father, you see the people in the church this morning. And Lord, I'm sure there's some here this morning that would like to have more action, but they really don't know how to accomplish that. I want you to bring them forth to the altar this morning, dear God, and let them realize they can be a Nehemiah.
They can be strong for you. They can be healthy for you. They can be wholesome for you. They can be peculiar for you. God, now my word tells me that you'll give us the strength and the power to overcome anything. Lord, I know there's some in this place today that's going through some terrible things right now, some bad things. And Lord, they're looking up like, what am I going to do next? Well, Lord, I ask them to come to the altar next. I ask, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord. I ask that you would prick their hearts this morning. I ask that you would poke them, Lord. Whatever it takes to get them up here this morning, dear God. Let them realize this is the forgiving altar this morning. Let them realize, Lord, that the things that they give to you this morning will be tossed, my Bible tells me, out into the sea of forgetfulness. Lord, I feel there's some here this morning that has things in their life that they just can't seem to forgive or forget. Lord, that's not you. I ask, Lord, that they can be forgiven. I ask that they can forget the things that they've done in the past. It does not matter. We are living in the presence of you now. So, Lord, I ask that you open their eyes to that. Bring them forth this day, Lord. Help them, Lord, to understand how much you love them, how much you want them to be used by you. Let them realize, Lord, that they're actually a servant. Lord, I know everybody in here believes in you, or we wouldn't even be here. I truly know that. But, Lord, do we truly do what we need to do to say that we can move a mountain? Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Now, dear Jesus, you see the ones that have come to the altar this morning. You see the things that they want to ask for forgiveness for. Maybe some of them is just here to ask for more action. Oh, Lord, give it to them. Lord, you see the ones that are here this morning that can't seem to forget some of the things they've done in the past. Well, Lord, I say whoopee to that. We've all done things in the past. I don't care how minor, how major, how minute, how enormous. It doesn't matter. A sin is a sin. So, Lord, forgive us of that. We ask for that right now in your precious son's name. Lord, you see the ailments that are up here this morning that's keeping us from having full action? We ask for removal of that debris right now. Lord, we also call this altar a dump because, Lord, we want to dump our burdens on you this morning. And, Lord, your word says that they'll be tossed to and fro but we must forget them. We must confess our sins. Lord, help us to be a Nehemiah. Lord, we do thank you for Nehemiah and so many more people of the Bible that stood up for you. Some of them got tortured for you. Some of them got beaten for you. Some of them got their heads cut off for you. And it still goes on today. So, Lord, please help us. Let us realize it's okay because we know where our final destination is. Let us be really, really sure today of our final destination. Let us become pure. Let us become holy. Let us become complete in your word today. Lord, touch all situations everywhere. Touch this old lost world. Touch these ones out here that say they believe in you, but live like the old devil. Lord, touch them. Help them, Lord. We're standing in the gap for them today. Lord, you see some of our family members, even some of our kids, even some of our relatives, whoever it could be, even friends, even neighbors, Lord, that's not serving you today. Lord, we stand in the gap for them also. Touch them in a special way. Lord, we're confessing our things to you right now. We ask in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, that you would take them away from us and forgive us. We ask of that of you because you are of love. In Jesus' name, if all could say, Amen.